Hello everyone, how are you doing? It's Jordan here, back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the third week of August, the 15th until the 19th. Little League World Series Baseball 2022 is seemingly releasing in North America this week. I guess Europeans are excluded from stick and ball shenanigans, especially ones that involve spitting in one's hand and slapping the arse cheeks of a sweaty dude. This is being published by Game Mill, so you know it's going to be a run-of-the-mill license tie-in that will be about 10 bucks in a few months. Hold tight, be patient, your little league needs will be cheap pretty soon. And our executive producer Boombox has chosen this as his pick of the week. Bug Snacks is releasing in Europe this week at retail. I am 8-bit handled this on their website in North America. Not sure how the retail version is going on over there, but this looks to be a fabulous little game. A bit of Pokemon Snap feeling for me. It looks great. I have a digital code for this somewhere in my emails and I've been meaning to give it a go or I could give it away. Yes, in the comments, let me know what you think my favorite insect is. And uh, yeah, if you get it correct, then I'll give a European download code for Bug Snacks next week. And for what it's worth, I don't think I've ever mentioned it before, so you'll just have to guess. Good luck with that. And our executive producers, Cartoon Soren and Parsnip Coffee, have chosen this as their pick of the week. Zenith is releasing in Europe this week, finally. This has been up as a placeholder for perhaps like half a decade at this point when Badland Games were threatening to publish it. But for some reason, it seems as though fun stock have taken over the reins of Badland and their slightly mediocre pre-order offerings. Zenith is a fantasy action RPG that supposedly promises humor, parody, and pop culture references, which is what I always associate with medieval fantasy settings. Don't know about you guys. Can't wait to hear those Back to the Future and Simpsons references while I'm riding a horse and cart. I don't believe this is releasing in the US as of right now. Okay, the Low Prince Red Colony Trilogy is Play Asia's latest Nintendo Switch exclusive physical. It's been quite a long time since their last one, so I assume they were cooking up something good. Uh, but yeah, this is a Red Colony. More like colonoscopy. Sorry, I just want to make that joke. But yes, here we have three games on one cartridge. Exploitative B-movie schlock of the highest order. These are survival horror games that are mainly about the ridiculous boobs that are seemingly detached from the actual ladies. Solve puzzles in order to survive. Make sure you don't lose your clothes. Actually, I'm not sure if there are nipples in the Switch version. These are Resident Evil games if they were made by Hugh Hefner. And yes, I'm well aware that he's dead, which is why these look so bad. Not much room to code in that coffin. Actually, I read reviews that they probably look worse than they actually are. They seem to offer decent enough survival puzzle experiences that just so happen to have hentai Barbies as protagonists. I mean, that can't be bad, right? I'm sure your nan will understand when she walks past your bedroom. Will I buy this? Of course. Will I be ashamed? Of course. Do I want you to buy it? It would be nice since these PlayAge exclusives definitely keep the lights on here. I just wish the last three weren't so, uh, shall we say, uh, fun box media-esque. It seems they high-fived each other after seven pirates and thought they had wiggle room to do a handful of slightly disappointing stuff. Never mind, please buy it you depraved son of guns. And if you do want to order this, then please come back here on Thursday when pre-orders open and use our links in the description. If you click those links and pre-order it, it also helps us more than you can possibly know. And of course, you can use our discount code STEENBOK for 5% off. But please use the link first. That's how to support us properly. And I thank you ever so much. I thank you kindly. Behind the frame is I Am 8-Bit's latest pre-order. I guess they wanted to get We Are OFK out of their feed as quickly as humanly possible. Who wouldn't? Behind the frame looks way more heartfelt and sincere which is Iron 8-Bit's usual stick, so it's nice to see they're getting back on track rather than the corporate vomit nonsense. Uh, sorry, uh, you can stay on track, Jordan. This seems to be a game about enjoying the moment. Chill out and paint something. Be inspired. It's mostly just a bunch of inconsequential minigames from what I can see, but that's not really the point. Open the window. Let the breeze come in. Enjoy the atmosphere. This will be headed to retail, but supposedly not as fancy as the website version. And our executive producers Jennifer M and Instacritic have chosen this as their pick of the week. Being home alone with you is worse than death. Is Limited Run's latest Switch release. This is a triple pack of mobile adventure games. 
each with a horror twist, at least mildly. I can't say I'm a big fan of the vibes that Home and Worse Than Death give since it's kind of like that style's been done to death. I don't care how old these ones are, but Alone With You looks quite alright. It definitely has me intrigued and it's more than 40 minutes long, so it's definitely the featured release here. I do wonder if the developers planned this name in advance somehow three individual titles made half a decade apart come together to kind of make one sentence. It's a painful sentence, but it's an acceptable sentence. You can pre-order this tomorrow. And our executive producers Viz and Brent McLean have chosen this as their pick of the week. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 is Limited Run's biggest game this week. Yes, they're back on the Star Wars train yet again. How could one of the biggest franchises on Earth possibly make it at retail. Thank God for Limited Run. I didn't think Disney would be able to keep the lights on in their castle for a few moments there, but hey, Knights of the Old Republic 2 is possibly one of my greatest gaming disappointments. I'm, I'm sure the game is good and all, but back in the day when I almost shit my pants from being so excited about playing this on my Xbox and the game just crashed every five minutes and glitched so badly, I thought I had a faulty copy. I probably did. Yeah, I didn't play more than like an hour or so because I couldn't. So I went back to playing the first game, which is a masterpiece. Oh well, I'm sure lots of those issues have been fixed over the years, so maybe I'll give it a go. Sadly, as Limited Run have boldly stated, this and the original won't get a double pack release at retail like their previous Star Wars games, much to their embarrassment, since they promised they would never have signed these games up in the first place if they weren't exclusive. But you, you know, forget the whole part where they said publishers are free to do whatever they want with their games after Limited Run release. <clears throat> Also, for some reason, the Switch version's file size is just incredibly bloated, meaning a double pipe would be almost impossible, I would think. Since this is Star Wars, you know they have more than just a standard edition, and you know that, of course, there is a $175 collector's edition, which has somehow, beyond all reasonable sanity, become the norm for them. Who's got $175 to blow on some pieces of paper? Also, as you may know, Knights of the Old Republic 2 had content cut from its original release due to time constraints, but this Switch version is due to get the content restored in an upcoming free update. However, it is unknown if Limited Run's version will have that cut content or not, because despite me seeing that question being asked at least 100 times, they have not responded, despite answering plenty of different questions around it as well. They are dodging that question like me dodging my student loans. It would be a pity if it's not on there, and if it's not, I just don't understand why they didn't wait until it's finished, then can do it. It doesn't make sense to me, but fingers crossed, maybe we'll get more info later this week. And our executive producers, Thorn Metal Luna, Precision Plague, and Robotech have chosen this as their pick of the week. Alright, the imports. Remember guys, if anything takes your fancy, then click the links in the description to purchase it and support us at the same time, and our discount code, Steenbock. Now this week there's not really that much because uh, there's only Dungeon Munchies releasing in Hong Kong this week after already releasing in Japan, but for some reason, literally the week, maybe even the day of the Japanese release, Serenity Forge announced they are doing a North American version, so yeah, this game is not an import exclusive anymore, that can happen. And that's it for this week. But I do want to mention a couple of new announcements if you want to get your pre-orders in, and firstly, one that I am really, really excited about called Signalis, which looks like a much better survival horror game than Red Colonoscopy. I am well excited for this game. It looks very atmospheric with nice pixelated 3D to give it that authentic Resi Evil feeling. It just oozes classic survival horror with puzzles and shit. Oh yes. This is releasing in Japan in October with English and it may get a Western physical because, you know, it's actually been published by not so humble games who do dealings with literally anyone, most likely limited run. Fingers crossed they don't though. Uh, this could do with a wider release. Also, A Train D Eco Hirogaru Kanko Line Guidebook Pack 
this is the original A Train All Aboard Tourism game. That's that's a bit of a niche import exclusive, but this new release also includes uh, some expansion content. I don't know if it's on the cartridge or a download, sadly, but it, it suggests it's on the cart. It also comes with a guidebook, which obviously will be a bit useless for most of us. Never mind. It's the same game, but more of it with English. So yeah, if you're on the fence with this release, this is likely to be the better option of the two. Alright, the community spotlight. Bunny Bear got in these three from Limited Run. Fatal 12 looking rather lovely there. It's a visual novel. Slight Yuri elements, but definitely more about the plot of trying to cheat death. Looks good. Burai Murian picked up this bunch of games. Of course, one of many to pick up Xenoblade 3. It's all I'm seeing on Twitter. Loads of people loving it and 1% of Try Hard saying it sucks. Try harder. Executive producer Cartoon Soren picked up these games. Lumot is a European exclusive game. Looks very beautiful. A trippy puzzle game using bioluminescence as a theme. Cell 718 picked up these games. Dusk is one of those great games that Limited Run didn't give enough love to really. Promising a full color manual, but actually it turns out to be a folded piece of card. Nice. Diesel JT showed this double helping of Cotton, two retro titles, 100% and Panorama. I have to say I'm quite excited about the Japanese double pack coming later this year, but admittedly, these look very nice. Drew picked up these games. If you used our links, thank you very much. A double River City helping. In case you're a new-ish viewer here, River City Girls is available in Asia much cheaper than trying to get limited runs. Garzilla, thanks for using our links to hoover up a bunch of Play Asia restocks. I didn't take you for a man of ultra culture, but you're well on your way there with Moro, Sense and If My Heart Had Wings. Executive producer God of Resin sent in this photo of some fabulous titles. Live Alive and Xenoblade within a couple of weeks of each other is insane, frankly. What a time to be alive. Executive producer Grant Sir sent in this photo of Young Souls from Pix and Love. I do wonder if Limited Run sent out their version yet. Not really sure how that's getting on. Can't really remember. Executive producer Instacritic sent in this photo picking up Squish. Yeah, the poor bugger sandwich between Xenoblade and Digimon. Irina sent in this photo showing off a wealth of games that have accumulated over the weeks. I didn't even know Deathmark got a collector's edition on the Switch. That is interesting. Executive producer Jennifer M sent in this photo of some visual novel import goodness alongside that weird game that I should definitely get around to reviewing at some point. Look at it. My pal Dragon, thanks for using our links to pick up the games. Here, the Japanese Colonel is something North Americans should look into, or maybe the European version. Why you were not deemed worthy of a Klonoa physical is a mystery. Needless Dragon sent in this picture showing off Endling. A lot of people were excited about this one, but I haven't seen it a whole lot. I do wonder if it's going to be hard to get a hold of in the future. Ninja Darkovia sent in this photo, again of the two lovely JRPGs. Probably enough content to last till the end of the year, I would say. Executive producer Punky Dooster sent in this photo, doing what he does best, showing off low print releases like the very meta There Is No Game and the classic Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Very nice. Roran sent in this photo. It's been a while. He got in Fight of Gods, which uh, I actually sold to him, and it only took me like uh, ooh, six months to send it to him. Yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. I'm almost as bad as Limited Run. That's why I've stopped selling my items on Discord. Psych Villain, thanks ever so much for the donation. Here's some pretty sweet box art for Axiom Verge. Oh, oh, I, I think that's the original release, not Limited Runs. That makes sense now why it's so good. All right, let's have a roundup. Chris Dallas, Philip, Pabs, Kill, Ying, Ashura G, Merciless Switch Collector, Vast Neon, Dead Tech. Jim, Mickey McFlynn, Starvey, Park Ranger, Golbat Lover. All right, please send me your pictures over on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or tag me in a post. Use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. We have an email address. It's on the screen right now. Switchwatchspotlightgmail.com and our Discord. The server link is below. Please, only one picture per week, okay? 
And uh, yeah, thank you for enjoying this Let's Get Physical episode. Special thanks to our executive producers. As always, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boom Box, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech Z, Raven Knights, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Issa, V, Mental Traveler, Grant Cert, Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, and Kadacha. Thank you for your support. Plus you. Yeah, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, give me a baseball emoji in honor of literally baseball world blah blah blah. Because yeah, no one's gonna care about that, so we need to give it a little bit of a little bit of love, because everyone's gonna forget about it. All right, please go check out my new channel, A Bit More Jordan for a Lot More Me. A lot of people really enjoyed the Jackie Chan retrospective that I did, and I think you will enjoy it too. And uh, yeah, don't forget about the Bugs Nights competition. Just write what you think my favorite insect is. Yes, I do have one. And be sure to check out some of our other stuff. We've got a lot of stuff out there. And yes, please come back here on Thursday if you want to get the Red Colonoscopy Trilogy. I would massively appreciate it. I'm getting it because I'm a weirdo. And I know there's plenty of weirdos out there too. And I love you. Take care. Take care.